Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Money in the Lawn, My FM 101.3 and Howlson Cable Access TV with your host, Jay Marsden from the Marsden Law Group. And I'm John Drohan from Manifort Financial, once again, coming at you here on a Saturday morning, gorgeous Saturday morning, if I, uh, can, Lights out. If I can anticipate. Lights out, beautiful, beautiful yep. Saturday morning. And uh, although we're recording on Wednesday, it's a gorgeous Wednesday morning as well. Um, we're here to talk to you, as we do every week, about things that you probably don't like talking about, money. Um, legal matters, uh, getting your affairs in order. You know, I don't all think that people stuff. dislike talking about money. I just think that depends on how you talk about well, it. Well, it's, I mean, I mean, if the question is, do you want more of it? I think people, the well, people's yeah. general answer is yes. I, I mean, right. Yes. So yes. if the, if the discussion is, Hey, I found this money. Do you want it? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> then, that's like, right. I'll, then I'll talk about it all that's day. Right. Hey, you hit the vaccine lottery here in Massachusetts <laughs> and I have a million dollar check for somebody. Anybody interested? Who wants it? I yeah, think, yeah. With no, yeah. With no stipulations or no, uh, no, no handcuffs. strings attached Ooh, yeah. at all. Yeah. Uh, but when it comes to talking about some things like, hey, so um, are you? Uh, do you think you're uh, putting enough away for retirement, or uh, what's your your retirement portfolio look like, or uh, does your for you know how many times have you asked people, so um, what's the match on your four hundred one k? And they're like, oh well. You know, I think it's like three. Uh, hey, how's I mean, your portfolio? Yeah, what, was yeah. the, what was the comment? Oh, it's uh, strong. Yeah. Strong. Yeah. Strong. My, what, was yeah. The, what was that movie? I forget that movie. But it's a great quote. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so yeah, some people, I many people don't like to, talking about the intricacies of money in the sense of like, it makes them feel self-conscious because just like anything, like if someone says to me like, hey, uh, you know, what, what's your workout plan? I'm like, I don't know. Is it, is it good enough? Like, I mean, am I doing enough? Am I, right. you know, am I, and they, and, and they kind of get in this relative situation where they compare themselves to other people. Uh, and they compare they themselves can, to everybody, yeah. not other people, everybody. Right. It's a constant measurement of right. where it, is your, it's where almost is like, everything. right. It's almost like, like kind of what social media is doing to like the youth of today where everybody's right. everything, you know, so when it, when it comes up, you're like, oh, I'm, I'm not doing enough i'm self-conscious so oh, it's you know and i'm nervous and i don't want to talk about it right so that's what we're here for we're calm here down. calm yeah, you down yeah, talk you off the ledge say, listen listen come on we'll talk about it you're doing and i'll tell you right now you're probably doing better than you think and, and most people yeah, that i talk to I mean, <laughs> most people that i talk to they're like oh my god i'm so bad with my but they're not you know what it's not so bad it's not it's definitely not something that's not workable or fixable or something that you can improve on well you can always improve on it but here's the thing don't ignore it because it doesn't get better. I mean, if, 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 right. assuming for one second that you're not doing well with it, don't ignore it. Because he's get, kind of a glass is half empty. Um, my, glass is, my glass is my glass is my glass is usually more than, more than half. My glass is usually more than <laughs> half empty. Let me tell you that right now. That's right. So it doesn't stay half full for long if it is. <laughs> so here we go. So 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 there you go. We got a little yin and yang thing here. So what I'm telling you is, if if you're feeling stressed out about it. Uh, there's, you're probably, you're probably over, overthinking it. But at the same time, in, in my friend's, his point is that, you know what? It's not something to ignore. It's not something that you just can blow up and be like, ah, I don't want to forget because that then, then you're probably not going to be in the position that you want to be in or think you want to be in or think you're going to be in when it comes time for retirement. Yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you. And then there's the law. Oh, always great. And always that's, great. That's so a, exciting. Right. So let's, right. Because, and again, we've talked about it, you know, a trillion times on the show. You know, this is kind of like, this is, this is one of our main themes is, is estate planning, right? And, and, and getting your, your, your estate in order and doing all the right things, making all the right moves early on or early enough to yeah. when, so when, when the time comes, you know, because all, all an estate plan is, is what you want to see happen after you're done. After you, you know, after you, you check out, you know, you make your final curtain call and it's time for you to go. You just, you're like all of my hard work, my life's work. This is what I want to see. My legacy, my legacy. Where's where, where my legacy going? This is where I want, what I want to see happen. What does it and, look like? How am I leaving it? Yeah. And so, so implied in that conversation is we have to talk about you being dead. <laughs> so that's always a fun thing. You being thing. no longer yeah. of this You earth. being, right. You that's having right. no more influence. Yeah. So you're not here and this is what is going to sure. happen. Yeah, and, sure. Yeah. So that's always, that's always a, you know, that's a tough conversation for, for many of us. Because well, you know, it's funny. It is a tough conversation. I agree with you. But you know what? It's also in some respects, it can be motivating, right? And now what, the reason I say that is I just happened to come across an article uh, this morning while getting my, article, this, this. getting my mindset ready for the day, I which I like it. to do, I right? So it. I'm I love self -improvement. lipping through an article. And, and the article, it was about, it was a Steve Jobs kind of advice article about, you know, one of the things that Steve Jobs, who I think we would all agree had some degree of success in his professional career, yep. right? Kind of knew what he was doing. 
Uh, and one of the things that he, and, it, and what's famous is his Stanford graduation speech. You know, this, if you've never seen it, go on YouTube. It's the Steve Jobs Stanford graduation speech. It's supposed to be this, this like breakthrough, legendary, you know, uh, advice and guidance to new graduates, right? It gets all kinds of accolades. And if you haven't seen it on YouTube, check it out. But that was one of the things that he used to ask himself every day. He would get up and he'd say, if today was your last day, right. what are you going to get done? What are you going to do? What do you need to get done? What are you, what are you going to yeah. do? What are you going to do? You get today, today's the day. Today's the day. What's 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 well, on your priority well, that, list? Well, that well, there's 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 like my things that I need to get squared away, and then if like this is my last day, there's a couple things that I. A couple things you might yeah. you might move some other stuff <laughs> yeah. around. You might move some other stuff around. Yeah, I'm just right? going to go ahead and borrow this Ferrari of yours. I'm, you know, I know the keys are in. I'm just going to you know, see. Just I could see, uh, I could I could I could borrow that Ferrari, or I could I, I got to get my checkbook balanced. <laughs> Maybe I'll take that out. Maybe I figure I, yeah. I got one I got one 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 left, one and done. Let me see what I'm going to do. That's right. You might move it around a little bit. Let me see if I can get this thing up to 100 but miles. But from an from an entrepreneur, and everybody's an entrepreneur, right? You we're all we're all in charge of Marsden Inc., Rohan Inc., right? We're all in charge of that. But but to, but in some respects, that was one of the things. Again, all, I only bring it up because you mentioned that there's this sort of potential morbidity factor around the estate planning portion of our discussion. But in some respects, no. In some yeah. respects, I think it's 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 motivational in a sense to say, look, this is what I want to do. This is this is th these are my this is my objective. This is my goal. This is my legacy. This is what I want to do. I, I think it's more, we don't want to talk about, well, what happens if you're not around. We want to talk about what's your legacy going to look like. Yeah. That, that, to me, is, is, is inspiring. You know, it's not, there's nothing negative about it. I mean, obviously, it's negative because it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily have to come into play when you're not around. But it's, I, I, I think people look at it the wrong way. I think you really want to say, look, get your stuff lined up. Get your stuff lined up. Let's, 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 let's let you be you, right? Let's you, let you pass this on. Well, the nice thing is, is when you're when someone's probably in your office, right, and you say, okay, you know, we're, we're going to put this together. This is, you know, what do you, what's the, what's the, what's the vision you want to see? You know, they're talking to you, so you're like reality. You're like, look, I, I got good news and bad news. The good news is you're going to have a legacy. The bad news is is you're going to die. Like it's every all of us, it's going to happen, right? Happen everybody. So kind of like that, you know, when you when you kind of get not your a question of, of if, not yeah, a question of if. It's just a matter, of, right? It's just when. So you you kind of get this like. You know, all right. You know, enough is enough. Come on, grow up. This, this is like you know, this is grown up talk here. Yeah. You know, we we have to. But and and then and then you kind of throw it out there that inspiring piece of like, hey, what do you want to do? Like, what do you want to see happen? And and you have right now to the rest of your life for, to to get this done. Sure. Like, and and how long that is? And we always used to, you know, the the line in 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 uh, in airborne operations was you you know if you're if you're if your main chute doesn't deploy you have your reserve chute you have the rest of your life to get that open yep. so there you go it's a, you, you th this is your time you don't you have no idea how much time you you have left That's right. so get it done and, and 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 so when you kind of put it in those perspective people are like ah, all right you know like and and they know that and the other thing is you say look we look, the way this works the way the estate planning works is we're going to do it we're going to box this up put it in a nice little package and then with luck we're not going to need it for a long time oh, it's sit in the shelf it's going to get pretty uh, dusty we, yeah and, absolutely and, right yep and with the grace of god this that we're not going to look at this for another you know well we're not going to need this for another 20 to 30 years we have, may have to you know rev revisit it and make sure that it's it's right and check it but other than that we're not going to have to we're not going to execute this plan for a long time if if things go the way according to plan well and if you I, I feel like if you take advantage of your lawyers just like you take advantage of your financial Lawyer, advisors lawyers are always being taken advantage I mean, of but i'm saying take advantage of the relationship right yeah. people call you up all the time they're like hey john this is what i'm thinking right what, what do you think about this well there's a couple of ways that we can approach that we can attack it this way we can attack it that way you know let's 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 put some food for thought on the table and you figure out what's the best for you right on the estate planning side I think in some respects, and I, I would implore people that if you, you know, to establish a good relationship, doesn't have to be us, it certainly can be, but to establish a good relationship with a law firm or a lawyer that you like and that you enjoy working with and that you enjoy talking to. And that you trust. And that you trust so that you can pick up the phone and say, hey, this is what's going on. What do you think? You know, I mean, and, and look, as somebody who does these plans, is, is, and and you, if you've listened to the show, you know we love talking about this stuff. I know you might not, you know, you, you, you the average you know, listener, if you will, you don't like talking about the mortality issue. You might not like talking about things in terms of your legacy. But guess what? The more you talk about it, the easier it becomes right. to talk about it. So if you constantly put off the conversation, then when you actually have, are faced with having to have the conversation, it's a very, very difficult conversation to have. 
So you just got to you got to break through that, and you got to say, look, let's have a conversation. Yeah, it's let's like talk rip about off it. the band aid. That's and, right. That's and, right. And get to work. And, and let's and, talk about it when there's no urgency. Yeah, right? you know, even better, right? Even better. So yeah, like I feel really good. You know, knock on wood. I'm not. You know, I'm. I'm. I, there's. I'm. I don't see anything down. You know, on the horizon right yeah, now that yeah. that anything's going to change in the near future. So yeah, what better time to talk about it than that? Right? Absolutely right. You know, and just 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 again, just have a conversation. Just. Be able to turn things over in your head. The more you talk about it, the less imposing it will be when it actually becomes time, if it ever becomes time, to talk about these things. It's a, it's, it makes a huge difference. Yeah. So is that, I mean, I, all I was doing was just explaining what we do for... I know, you we know, kind of get off a little bit of a tangent uh, For those are, of you are, who have pulled over to take yeah. notes, I apologize. <laughs> that's okay, get off a that's little okay. Bit of a that's it's there. good. No, but it's okay. That's what happens uh, when I start my day off with a Steve Jobs quote. I just get a little... <laughs> yeah, wall, you get motivated. I get, all, I get yeah. all riled up. Yeah. I get all get riled little, up. You, you yeah. put on the afterburners. That's right. Um, and, a, and a black turtleneck. And this is the part of our show where we extend our special thanks to our great friend Christian, who is here once again, our partner in crime. He, uh, of course, is dual camera. You know, for those of you who have never seen this on TV, go to HCAT and watch this. I mean, this is this is t this is must see television. It's a two camera shoot. It's a two camera shoot. So we have like the double angles, not not like the side angles like they do. They had like in the uh, like on the on the news, you know, where you can where Jay will then take a look to the side. You know, we don't have that. We just have the back to you, John. <laughs> back, back to you. To you. <laughs> and here we are back in the booth. Uh, so yeah, so thanks, Christian, for being here for and Hollis and Cable Access TV. Um, this is the uh, the next part of the show is where we talk about the weather. So now for your weather report, <laughs> report brought to weather. you by the Marston Law Group. Uh, here's my partner and uh, chief weatherman, Jay Marston. Nothing to talk. I mean, <laughs> nothing to talk about. The, you know, I will say this: nothing to talk about the weather, other than I did come in here saying this morning that you know we get a couple of days of rain, mm -hmm. and for 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 whatever reason, I feel like when you get into the the the, the springtime, you know, where the things are starting, the weather's always nice or nicer. Two days of rain feels like two weeks. Oh, brutal. And Absolutely then, brutal. And then you're like, oh, man, oh, man. This, That's this, ruined. This is killing yeah, me. my summer's ruined. Over. It's puddles. Right to winter. Let's right. go. Let's <laughs> get, get the rock over. salt out. Get it over with. Right. <laughs> Yeah. You know, put the shovels were, out the porch. You were putting salt on your yeah. driveway, right? That's right. Yeah, Jay's right. got a steep driveway. You never know. You never that's know. Right. You freeze over. Flash, flash freeze. Yep. Flash freeze here late June. Yep. Frost, next thing I know. Yep. So that's it. So what do you want to talk about today? What's on your mind? I got something on my mind. Oh, boy. Yeah, I got something on my mind. And, and you're going to like this. So I was thinking about this uh, in the week, you know, as I, when I'm reviewing, you know, my di different potential topics for sure. the show. Yeah. Uh, so today I want to talk, again, as, you know, as we've said before, all roads lead to retirement. Yes, they so do. So this is what I, I, I wanted to challenge you, you and I together, to, uh, to do a little brainstorming session to, and again, neither of us are retired, but we know many retired people, and say, okay, if we were, if, if, if we could draw up a map, if we could draw up like a, a guide, a glide path for what retirement looks like, Jay and I are going to tell you, this is how you retire. Whoa. Like, you know, some of the, like, and go down the checklist. Some of the things that you need to think about, some of the things that, you know, like if you're, if you're going to retire, here's, these are all the things and that people need to, you know, make sure that you're, you know, you're, you're aware of, you know, your healthcare plan. You're aware of kind of what your, you know, what other benefits that you may be entitled to. If you're a veteran, if there's any veteran benefits. So a retirement readiness discussion. Kind of like a, like just like, like a how-to, like a, yeah, you know what, sure. almost like a playbook on yep. like, if you're going to retire, this is what you need to sure. do. Huh? Yeah, absolutely. So that's what I want to do today. I how to it. retire. All right. So we'll go to a quick break. We'll come back. We'll talk about retirement readiness and how to get how to do ramped it. up. We're going to tell you how to ramp do up for retirement exactly readiness. Exactly how like to do it. No matter where you about. are, this is what you have to do. All right. We'll, we'll be right back. And we're back. <laughs> Money of the Law, My FM 101.3. Uh, Jay Marsden with the Marsden Law Group. John Drohan, Minute for Financial. Christian steering us along here in the. Uh, the depths of uh, New England spring as we move uh, move headlong into summer. Very exciting time of the year for us. And before we jump on our topic, though, um, I, one of the things I was thinking about as well is, um, you know, so summer's upon us, right? Yes, it it's, is. It's time, right? And, and of course, your favorite time of the year, my favorite time, you know, pretty much everybody's favorite time of the year, especially kind of up here in, you know, when we're in, you're in the four season territory yep. where summer's, you know, you have summer for a, a finite period of time and then, you know, then it's it's over. Then there's that other stuff. Right. So one of the things that I that I struggle with sometimes, and I, I've I've, tr I've struggled with over the years, is like you know everybody's like so if you bump into somebody, see somebody you haven't seen for a while, and you say, hey, what are you doing this summer? And then it's I, I, it's got to be something, right? It's got like you yeah. think again, you kind of feel self conscious, like well, I have to make sure that I'm oh, we're going away, we're doing this, we have this part, you know, we have to have like these 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 planned accomplishments that we have, sure. right? And I don't I think those are overrated. 
I think that I think that some of the best summer days that I've had have been kind of you know spontaneous things that have sure. happened. Yeah. Um, and and just because if I you know if I look back on a summer and if I didn't like go away for on vacation and have this you know this epic vacation or if I didn't you know you know if we didn't like you know build something in the backyard or something like that it doesn't mean that summer's a failure at all I mean it's some summer summer you only, you only have whatever it's like your you know hundred days Twelve weeks whatever yeah, 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 your, yeah. your hundred days of summer and so at, at that point like it's like you know something good my my point is. Make something good happen every day, no matter what you're doing, no matter, yeah, no matter where you are. And yeah, slow it down. Slow it down a yep. little bit. It doesn't always have to be this grand gesture. It doesn't have to be fireworks every day, right? Relax and enjoy and take it all in. I mean, and think about, like, so you you spend a lot of time down in Cape Cod. So in, so when you're in Cape Cod, like, I mean, uh, if you don't, you know, you know, every day in Cape Cod, I know that at my mother's house, it's always like there's a laundry list of things. Like, we got to get this done. We're going to go here. We're going to go this. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. And, you know. Like I said, some of the best days have been if we did nothing on the list other than maybe just one thing, or sure. something yeah. that something that came up that we didn't, you know, like oh, we went to we went to, you know, my mother had to go to this beach for some reason, you know, for yeah. something to do with the autobahn, and we'd never been there, and she'd get there and you're like wow, and we end up instead of like oh, we got to go to the beach today and do our beach thing that we right, always right, do, right, yeah. you know, it's yeah, like make hey, some plans and be flexible. That's it. Make some make plans, some plans be flexible. and be flexible. That's it. There you go. There's there you some go. summer right guidance from Money in the Law. There you go. Okay. So uh, let's get into it. How do you retire? How so? So how how is it that what, what is it that, that that people need to to be conscious of and think about and put on their list of how to retire? And the first thing we're, I want to talk about is kind of like the there's like a checklist of kind of must dos things that you must have kind of in in the books. Right? So real quick before we jump into that, which is I think this is the sort of predecessor to all of those things, and we don't have to spend a ton of time on it. We could dedicate a whole show to it, but. The first thing I think you need, and this is this has come up from time to time as we have conversations with clients. First thing you need to think about is you need to mentally get ready for it. Oh, that was the number one thing. I'm oh, all right, even better. All right, you great. know what? You study page. for the quiz. All right. All so, right. but by the way, when I say mentally get ready for it, I mean a couple of things. Put put aside. We'll talk about the money and stuff and all that stuff. But I think th there's a. I think you need to dive a little bit deeper on that getting ready for it. And when I say that, what I mean is you, you have to come at this with the idea that you are moving into another substantial milestone in your life, mm -hmm. right? The, you know, when, when you're when, in a new chapter. Uh, well, that's right. Oh, yeah. and, and, and there's only a handful of them, right? I mean, yeah. you know, when you, when you get married, that's a game changer, yeah. right? A lot of things are different in your world now, yeah. right? You have a kid, things are very different in your world yep. right now, right? Kid goes to college. Kids, both kids go to college. All three yeah, of your kids go to college. Everybody's in college, right? and you're back with you, you know, you and your spouse again. That's that, that. That's a big change. And the reason I say that this is a big change is there's so much buildup to retirement right. for all the right reasons, right? But I think one of the things that you need to what you need to be ready for going into this thing is that you you need to sort of see how the deck chairs have kind of been arranged. And you need to be comfortable knowing that this could be how they're arranged right. for a good long time, and this could be the last time you arrange them or rearrange them. I mean, like yeah, there it, may not be a, lot, a whole lot of change. You know, there, you know, I can probably count on one hand the number of retirees that have been retired for a long period of time and then had another change, like maybe moved somewhere else. That's I mean, right. You know, like not moved like to an assisted living or something like that. No. Although that's a big change, right? But maybe like you know they were they retired in Cape Cod and then they moved back to you know wherever, back to Beverly or wherever they were from because you know that's where their children were, or their grandchildren were. And and that's that's sort of the angle I'm taking on this one because you know what you spend your whole life angular. Well, you think you spend angular. your whole life talking with your friends about, you know, what are you going to do? Are you going to go to Cape? Are you going to retire to the mountains? Are you guys going to go to Maine? Are you going to go to New Hampshire? Are you going to, are you going to, are you going to buy, are you going to buy a place? Are you going to buy a ski place? Wait a minute, wait a minute. This is, this is not how that conversation goes. This, I'll tell you how this conversation goes. It's like, so are you going to retire and go to the Cape or are you just going to be a loser and do something else? No, 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 my, but my, my point is, my point is, if you haven't done some of those things already, my point is, you may not do them. If right. you haven't, you know, like some people, for any number of reasons, might say, you know, we thought about doing that, but it just kind of either it didn't work out. It never came together. We just never put the, the put our shoulder to the wheel to make it happen for any number of reasons. And now we're going to retire, you know, unless you're going to sell your primary residence and move someplace down south. You talk about houses up here in Boston. You, you might not be doing, I guess my point is, you might not be doing some of the things that you have maybe been kicking around in your mind yep. for the last 15 or 20 years. And that's what I mean by 
things start to get a little bit more fixed, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and if, if you didn't, you know, if you always thought you were going to do a, a second property somewhere and you never have, and now you're staring at retirement, it might not be happening. Yeah. And I think that that's something that you need to, not negative, not positive. I'm not, I'm not trying to paint this as a negative situation, but I think when you go in, you, you spend your whole life dreaming about what you think your retirement is going to look like. And I guess my point is, when you're now faced with the reality of what your retirement is going to look like, you, you got to be ready for that. Yeah. You got to be comfortable with that. You got to you got to say, yeah, this is this is what our dream looks like, and I'm okay with that. Yeah, or or this is what our dream has evolved to, right? Correct. You know, this is and and you know, we, so how many times do you have you talked to, especially younger clients, when you say, okay, look, everything is going to lead to retirement, but and and we're going to save for retirement, but I know right now retirement seems like a lifetime away. So that their their vision of retirement, when you talk to a 35 year old couple. You're like their reti retirement's like. Uh, oh, they can't even I, begin I kind to of imagine think, it. They can't well, begin no, but to imagine. they they can imagine. They imagine because they look at kind of like people that they know, like their parents or things like that, and they're like, okay, well, that's what their retirement looks like. So maybe that's. But I'm in, I'm in a different career. I'm in, I, I'm you know we have different we have different lifestyles. We have different hobbies and things like that. So retirement's always it's always a blurry picture for people. Well, it know. is, and our industry does a great job of painting this fantastical uh, vision a great job. of what retirement. I mean, it's supposed to and look right like. Now, you and I are not prepared for retirement because we don't have a big like like must like handlebar mustache or big, I don't, like magnum pi mustache. Because I'm not like, getting back into painting, <laughs> and I'm not moving back Full into painting. the city because yeah. Susan's having octuplets. Yeah, and you know, I haven't, I haven't dumped so, my property, and yeah. And so I mean, so again, bedroom. I guess that's my point. My point is first and foremost, be honest with yourself. This is it. Yeah. That's my point. Yeah. So, so this is it. So, so kind of what goes along with that is, is the question of why, why am I retiring? Yep. Right. So, so I may, it may be because I have to, cause it's, you know, my, I've, I've aged out it's time or it may be for health reasons. You know, so these are kind of like the, the, you know, the, you know, where it's almost like you have to retire and you don't really have a choice, you yep. know? So, yep. so it may be because of, for health reasons, it may be because my, my, my time has come, like there's an age limit and, 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 or, or because, I'm older and they've given me a package that I, I can't, I can't pass up. It's just, you know, like a, a severance yeah, package absolutely. that, yeah. that, that you're handing your free money. Why yeah. wouldn't you do it? Yeah. yeah. So, yep. so, and, and you're like, well, that, that could help me to, you know, to achieve some of my other retirement goals. So, so I'm going to take advantage of that. The other option, the other reason why people retire is like, well, uh, because I want to, well, why, why do you, why do I, why do I want to stop working now right. and, and turn this page in my life? And it's, is it because a, I have, I don't need the money, right? I don't, I don't right. need the money to, to continue with my lifestyle. And B, I don't want to, you know, for whatever reason, I, I'm, I'm not interested in working anymore. I, there's, or there's other things that I want to do. And that's really, that's really the, the, the driving force behind everybody's retirement. Even if it's, even if it's something that you don't have a choice to do is that there has to be a, a next chapter. There has to be, you know, sure. on that, you know, that the, you know, like when you read a book and you have like the quote in the beginning, like, like that quote needs to be motivational. And that next chapter of like, what am I doing next? Like, what's right. my, what's my plan? And, you know, God willing, you're, you're healthy and you, and you, you know, you're, 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 it's not something you're not restricted by health restrictions. And even if you are still, what am I going to do? Right. I, right. Mean, it's not, I, I still have to have a plan. So that, that's the, you know, that's kind of the, the top of that list is what's my plan going to be. And, and, and in going to say, uh, along with what Jay was saying is like, you know, what's my plan going to be given like the cards that I have right sure. now in my hand? Yeah. So, yeah. so, so the first and foremost, that, so, so let's say, you, you know, you have a plan, you have a plan. What are some of the next things? And, and again, these are kind of like a, almost like administrative things that I think about that, you know, that, you know, if I'm going to retire, these are, these are all things that I'm used to. And, and first thing that I, you know, that always comes to mind and, and a lot of people, they, they don't really understand it or they, they understand it, but they don't really kind of get their head around it is, and, and again, we'll talk about the money, is, is their health care. Because again, as you get older, you start to become like, you, you start to realize like, you know, your, your health, health is, is everything. Well, your health is, is becomes much more valuable. Yeah. 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 As you, especially as you see people like your contemporaries, if someone, you know, falls ill or, or is unable to do things or things like that, you know, you, you'll, you'll, you know, as, I mean, even now, like I'm 53 and as I'm getting old, I'm like, wow, it's nice to be, you know, I, I like being, you know, healthy. I like not sure. having like yeah. health issues, especially when you see other people have them. So, you know, and especially in the wake of the pandemic, you're like, so that, that becomes very valuable. So, so your health, and whenever we talk to people about retirement, it's like, look, I, I don't skimp on it. 
I don't skimp on healthcare. Just you know, based on like my father's experience and that he, you know, my father was chronically ill for a long, long time in retirement. And were it not for the fact that he had a you know a good healthcare program, you know, from the city of Yonkers, he he, you know, they wouldn't have been able to have right. all the flexibility that That's they right. had. That's right. So first and foremost, so first, so first, or, or near the top of that list, understand is, your healthcare options. Is what's what's my healthcare option and what's my healthcare plan, right? Yep. And you know when we talk about healthcare, so most of the time people are retiring in and around the age of sixty-five, so they're qualifying for Medicaid. But then Medicare. there's, or, sorry, Medicare, and then yeah, thank you. Then there's the. Uh, We'll talk about Medicaid later on, but then there's the uh, you're, you're going to want a Medicare supplement, right? Yep. You're going to have a you're going to have some kind of supplemental, you know, some supplemental policy that's going to allow you to kind of a continue to see the doctor if you've had a if you have a doctor that you've been going to for a long sure. time, um, have the ability for you, you know, if you were if you were to find yourself in a situation where you needed you know more health care than you than you have in the past, that it's not going to you know, totally change your whole financial picture and put you in a position where you're going to be really limited. Yeah, and most folks have, they have their Medicare coverage, they have the Part A, they have Part B, that covers their hospital stays, then they have a supplemental policy that covers the stuff that Medicare A and B don't cover, and they pay for that, and then that might come under the prescription plan, and you know, we're not, we don't need to get into the weeds on this, they, even the same thing, the commercials make this way more complicated than it is. Right. Um, and, and, and you can find out what the supplemental plans look like and the you know, AARP offers them and some other insurance companies offer them. And it's usually based on where you live and what state you're in and United's another one. So there's all these secondary payers out there and you just pay your insurance premium like that and that covers other things that you need to have in place. And that becomes, for the most part, your health care. Your, yeah. insur your health insurance is covered by Medicare, some secondary policy and maybe a Part D plan through Medicare or through a, a, a prescription plan that's part of your, your, your secondary payer. All right, although it sounds complicated, it's not as complicated no, as not. you think. No, it's not, it's not as complicated. Yep. It's not and more complicated than that. No, and, and so, so, so there you go. So number one on the list is why am I retiring? Number two, my health, right? Yep. So, that, so those are the two most, because you're- why, gonna, and am I, why and am I ready? Mentally, yeah. mentally, so forget the financial piece, yeah. there's, a, there's, a, there's a mental component. Oh no, we haven't talked important. money yet. We haven't talked no, money no, haven't talked Money's money not yet. a part of this. Nope, nope, this is just that you mentally ready for this next chapter in your life, and then do you have first a and foremost, do it in a way that maintains your health. Yep. Okay. So that brings us to number three. Are we talking about money yet? We, whatever it, you want. It, if is, you want to, if you want it, to, it's your side, that's your side of the table. That is, that is my, that is your my side of the table. I would start with the, the law, but if you want to talk with the money, that's fine. Well, you, well, you started, you started with the psychoanalysis of why and like, sure. are you mentally ready? Which that is the other thing that Jay provides as part of your legal service. Oh yeah. We, yeah, yeah, yeah therapy right. services. That's <laughs> yep. right. That's yep. right. In-depth therapy. We have, a ther we have a therapy dog right in the office. Let Come on in. He'll help you out. Let me tell you what you're thinking. Uh, so the, so the next part, the next piece is, um, before we get into the, the real money side is where, where am I going to retire? Like sure. where, where, where is this happening? For many people, it's like, I'm saying right where I'm what at. What do you mean right? where? Right yeah. here, where I live. Right that's, that's the this answer, is, right? This is my house, right? But what happens to, what, what are some other things that people do? Well, if the first thing is, if it's going to be here, is it here full time? Mm -hmm. Or am I looking to hang my hat I, someplace else for I, some am window I of time? Smoke. That's am I, right. Am I out of here? That's right. Yeah. That's right. And that could be a place that you've already lined up. You might have done some homework, and you might have said, "Look, back in the day, we bought a summer camp or a, or a play, you know, pick any pick any description of whatever a secondary place could be. And are we going to be splitting our time between these two places, or are we also done with New England winters and we're making the trek like everybody else on the Eastern Seaboard down to some place warmer than here?" In February. Yeah. Right? So That's so there's option. so there's a reason behind it. There's there's a there's a thought process behind that of why am I retiring in this place yep. where I, where I'm retiring? And maybe the answer is I'm staying here because this is where my family is. I'm staying yep. here because I like it here. I'm staying here because I can't afford to. I, I I we don't financially feel like we can afford to move somewhere else. Or we're staying here because. Like Jay said, we have a we have a plan because we don't have to stay here the, all the whole time. We can we're going to go someplace else for part of the time and then come back here and kind of have the best of both worlds. I mean, but how many times have you heard people say, "The minute I retire, we're selling this house and we're going sure. south, or sure. we're going west, or we're buying a camper, or, or we're doing we're we're going to we're going to take advantage of our youth. We're going to take advantage of youth? the fact that we've yeah. spent some time on this, and we're going to do the you know one one trip around the uh, around the U.S. good old U.S. of A. in a camper and see all the sites and do it that way. I mean, there's no end to the options. 
but you just got to have a sense of what that looks like. You yep. know? All right. So, so the, the question of where that, that also can have some financial implications of, of why I'm, why this is where I'm going to retire. But the other part of this is, again, we go back to the psychoanalysis of this is why there, like, why am I, why am I retiring here? And because, and I say that because when people say I'm going south, I'm out of here, I hate the weather, you know, but they, maybe they've spent time on vacation sure. in Florida or they've spent time on vacation in Arizona. Or they spend time on vacation in California, wherever they wherever they they want to move to, like kind of relocate to, but they haven't lived there year round. They haven't lived there when they haven't lived there without the the idea that oh I'm, I have a place to go back to. Yeah. Um, I I have a place to go back to where my if I have children and or grandchildren that that's you know we can we can kind of collect there, and they haven't kind of you know got there so. You know, I asked that question too. Like, okay, so wh why are you? Why do you want to go there? And then, and and are you mentally prepared for that? And sure. that's kind of part of that mental preparation for, you know, for retirement. So the where is it could be a big part because you may get somewhere and be like, eh, you know, this isn't what I, this isn't. This, this isn't what I remember when we would come no, down here on vacation for a week, right? Cracked like, up to be, yeah. You know, like yes. living in. So, so I, I, an example, and I'll ask you this. So, you go to Key West, right? So, Key West sure. is kind of like your hangout. So, would you retire in Key West? Well, it's funny you should say that because this aspect of what we're talking about in retirement right now, um, I've approached my wife with this conversation. We've had this discussion, which says, "Look, if we decide that Key West, our you know, our home away from home, if that's what it's going to be, it's me and you." Yeah. There's nobody else that we know of that's willing to, I mean, look, let's be honest, as, as, as great as Key West is, it's the end of nowhere, right? Yeah. I mean, it's the, it's the, it's, it's the, the end it's of the, the end. <laughs> it's the, it's the, it's the end of the road. It's yeah. literally the end of the road. Yeah. And so when, when, when you're thinking about what your retirement looks like, and if you're, if you're in a position where you think you're going to be spending some time someplace else, you bring up a great point, which is who's there? Are there people that you, you know, that are part of your your support network because the socialization piece is very, very important. It's a big part right. of, of it's a big non-monetary part of your happiness and your and your success, if you will, in retirement. And we've had that conversation. I said we've said to ourselves You gotta make new friends, right? Well, we're either gonna have to make new friends or we're gonna be happy just sitting around talking to each other for yep. four months and maybe get some day trippers from time to time who want to come down. And we've actually consider that as part of our discussion about if we were going to buy a place, we need to buy a place that has the ability to support some long-term guests, sure. right? Now, that, those guests could be two months, they could be two <laughs> weeks, they could be two days, they could be the whole, they could be the whole, but but it has those to be- Those guests could have the la same last name as you as well? They may, they may, <laughs> they, may will. they may show up in some family photos. <laughs> but but that's we've talked about this. We said, look, we know when we when we sort of go through this in our mind and figure out what it looks like, a lot of places that we think about, we say, look, we want them to have some type of uh, arrangement where it's a, either it's a, it's a multifamily or it has an outbuilding that that other people could kind of be in their own space. And we're not all watching, you know, fighting for the clicker at night. Right. right? I mean, that's that, those are the issues. And those those are important issues. Now, you know, we've also said, look, if we don't want to do that, if we're the, we might that might not work. We might not like that. We might not, not like the fact that nobody comes down to see us. Yeah. Nobody comes because it's too much work. And wherever you want to go, that could be that could be the case. That could be true. Yeah, that, and that's part of your kind of you know what your plan is in retirement. Yep. What's that? What's what are my what what's what, what's my job? You know, I'm I'm not working my job, but I everybody's gonna have a job after you know once you retire. You know, like what's my job? My job is to take care of my grandkids. My job is to you know fish every day. My job yep. is to do, you know whatever it is that you know my activity that I'm gonna do that is gonna make me get up in the morning. That if that involves like you know if I'm if I'm a if I'm big into volunteerism and you know I, I want to go to a place where I'm you know I'm, I, if I there's things that I can get involved with that I'll right. be able to make a difference. But the social aspect is that's a big part, right? Especially you know if you're you know I, and when my mom retired from Connecticut, and we're we're about to take a quick break. But when my mom retired and, and eventually moved up to up to Massachusetts. It was like, you know, we, she'd been connected for 50 years. Yep. I mean, that's where all of her friends were. Yeah. That's where all yeah. of the people that, you know, that we grew up with. So that's a big move for just kind of, because, you know, you say, oh, yeah, I'll see you. You'll come up and visit. No, it's not no, the same. No, you won't. No, you, you won't. Know, every, you know, because people just don't have, they don't have time. It's like, well, they don't have time. At some point, they might be able to, right? It gets harder and harder as you get older. Right. Some people can't drive as much. Or they have some physical limitations that make those trips more burdensome than they were when it was just shooting across town for lunch. So we'll take a quick break. And we'll come back and talk about this aspect of it because I think this doesn't get as much uh, play as it should uh, when you're watching. All right, that's a great teaser. We'll be right back. And we're back. 
My, my Jay Marsden with the Marsden Law Group, John Drohan, Main Effort Financial. My FM 101.3, Money in the Law. Christian, keeping us cool on the, uh, the back side so of the camera. Cool. So cool. So totally cool. And we're talking about retirement readiness from all aspects. It's not always just about the money. We haven't even talked about the money yet, right? No, we haven't no, even talked about the yeah, money. No. We've, gone, we've gone why, we've gone, we've gone health, and we've gone where. So we're well, talking. And, and you know what's funny? Again, we've, we, we joke about the, 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 the commercials and the shows and the this and the that and all this other stuff. The, the, I think the, the money is the, for me, the money is the easiest thing to talk about in the sense that it's fixed and finite and the number is what it is. Yeah. The, these things You're that we're talking about. You're not going to earn any more money, right? That's right. These intangibles are, are, are critically important because they're, they're the stuff that I think gets glossed over and, and, you, and you hear it all the time. I mean, as we're talking through this whole where thing, you know, what, what you think that's going to look like, uh, it brings me back to a, to a story one time of a, of a client of mine when I worked at that small mutual fund company in town and he had... Uh, him and his wife had purchased a place down in Florida because that's that's kind of what they were going to do. The like, to we're do, going yeah. to Florida. That's what we wanted to do. He loved golf. She loved the nice weather. They would. So he, we, I helped him out with all the stuff we were doing, and he, and he buys the place in Florida. And then see you later. We'll see. We'll see you in the spring, right? Yeah. Come we'll come back then. He comes back. I said, it was Florida. It was terrible. I said, yeah. What do you mean it was terrible? He goes, we bought a place in this place. You know, we bought a condo in this in this development that I thought was going to be great. He said, and we're selling it. Yeah. I said, what do you mean you're selling it? Why are you selling it? He goes, because I hate being on top of people. Right? I lived my whole life in a house, big house, my own big backyard, my this, my that, my own privacy. He says, now I'm sitting out on my deck smoking cigars, and the neighbor next to us complaining about the cigar smoke. And yeah. the people upstairs are complaining about the cigar smoke. And the people it's at the pool are complaining about the cigar yeah, smoke. It's and a he, different plan, right? He just said, you know, I'm just on top of all these people, and we want, we, want a something, we want something completely different. We're getting rid of this place, and we're, now we're going to do the house thing instead of the condo thing. You know? And it comes with different challenges. It comes with different costs, obligations, right? different costs, a different approach. But that was what, that was for them... That was something, and they, they, for these guys, money was not an issue. It was yeah. not a money issue. Yeah, they had yeah. plenty of money, but they just had not wrapped their head around the idea of we hadn't really thought through that we were going to be on top of people in this living environment, and and then the, and then it turned into some other things down the road, which is what you just mentioned, which is well, we bought here, you know, we bought in Naples, and most of our friends are in uh, right you know Beach, someplace yeah, yeah. someplace down the, on the east coast instead of the west coast yeah. or whatever. Pick it. And that, that became an issue about, you Daytona. know. Daytona. That's right. Yeah, that's well, right. I might, yeah, we're, we're, me, we're retiring to Daytona. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, bike week. But I mean, but this is, this becomes a thing, right? Where, where are your contemporaries going to be? Because that social network that you have up here, that support network that has gotten you to this point of your, of your life where you can, you can retire and, and do it in, you know, in, in, in you know, solid mental health status, that's going to potentially melt away a little bit. It's going to change. Yeah, that's absolutely yeah. right. It's, it's going to melt change, away no a little what, bit. It's we, we see it now. We yeah. see it now even just here. Like, you know, contemporaries of Oz, whose kids are out of the school system and they don't have any real need to be here anymore and their jobs are all remote, they're, they're, they're moving. They're moving out of Dodge in, 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 in flocks of, you know, they're all heading to different locations. So that network is, is, is going to start to melt away at some point. And you want to have some connection to it. These are your friends. These are the people that you raised your kids with. You know their kids. You, know, you want to you want to keep that going. And it, it's some, a lot of people won't admit this, but it gets a little tougher to make friends. You know, as you get a little older, you know, you're 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 uh, you're a little more set in your ways. You're not as flexible about. Well, you don't. You're and, not. A, you're not exposed to as many no. things unless you're putting yourself out there and yeah. you're and you're and you're meeting people. You know, by activities that you do. Yeah, it's hard. You know, it's different, right? Yeah. You're sitting in your house. You're like, you know, it's not like people can come knock on your door and say, "Hey, you want to be friends? What's your favorite color?" That's you know, right. it's yeah. you got to. It takes takes work, right? It takes work for any you know anybody. But if you're you know you're in a town and your kids are playing soccer and yep. you know you you know whatever you, you're you're part of like an organization. You're part of like you know different volunteer groups. Yeah. You, you naturally make friends. That's right. So that that, that network is going to change. You got to be prepared for it. You got to know it's coming, and you got to be open to it too. You know, you got to you got to be willing to take a chance and uh, you know put your hand out and make a friend. So so be, so again. So now we've we've covered three three essentially three of the major topics, and maybe four in in the in kind of that social. I, I like the I like the where kind of with the the subtext of of what's my what's my social situation? Have I have I gotten my head around what my yep. social situation is going to be? Because social and some people are like I don't care. Like I, I'm we we want to go. We want to spend. They may be more than happy just to spend time with one another. And and if they're if they're a couple or they're or they're moving to a place where they're gonna you know they're gonna, they'll be surrounded by family. Maybe sure. they're going back home. They'll be extended family. So they're like no no we're, we 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 understand what we're doing. You know yeah. socially yeah. we're good. So. So what's the next thing, right? So we so is is now the time to because 
Jay brought up earlier, like the, the, the money part, that's what most people talk about, right? right? That's what most people think about. You commit, you know, 95% of your energy and figure out how am I going to financially do this? Because, because that's an important, I'm, I'm not glossing that over by any stretch of the imagination. Like if you can't afford to stop working because you need to pay your bills, you need to buy gas, you need to buy food, then you, then you can't retire, right? right. So, so there's gotta be, there's gotta be, you have to have the financial capabilities to do that. And, you know, hopefully with, with good luck and good fortune and, you know, hard work, you've been able to put yourself into that position where now you're like, financially, I can do this. I can, we, I can support myself through all of my different income options because that's what we would tell our clients is like, look, the day before you retire and the day after you retire, there's not a big difference between those days. Nope. And, and in your mind, you know, you may say to yourself, well, I, you know, when you're, when you're working, I'm used to getting paid. I'm used to getting my weekly or biweekly or monthly income. When you retire, you're not going to want to change that. You're not going to want to like, you're not going to want to like go and say, oh, I'm just going to get paid every six months and, and then just, you know, kind of spend my money down. If, you, right. if you're used to kind of getting an income and being in, in a system and that's where you've been your whole life, your retirement's not going to be any different. You're going to get an income, but it's just going to come from a different source. So that kind of that kind of kind of continuation of that of that system that you're used to that's that's part of your kind of part of the, how your brain is wired. That's going to be an important part of things. So, so at at the, you know in, in number four. So number four at this, I, and I won't talk about kind of like the money, but I'm going to talk about cash flow. So because that's what people care about. Yep. People. That's what people. They don't think about. Oh, I've you know. Except unless you're my old man. My old man used to like you know count his money, right? And he'd I got this, and he would call me and tell me how much money, oh, yeah. even though I'm looking at it right on the screen, yeah, right? I yeah. Got the idea. yeah, I got yeah. it. Yeah. So. But most people, they, 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 they kind of know, I kind of know how much I have, but they, more they care about is they look at their bank account and they're like, oh, I got paid this, you know, I'm, I'm, I haven't bounced any checks. I, I have, I'm not running up credit card debt because my cash flow is good. So this is where I think, I think that at this, that next, you know, your cash flow in retirement and where you're going to generate your income from. And of course, that's where, you know, that's where your, all your financial planning that has kind of brought you to this point, right? Yeah, but we, but we talk about it. We don't even talk about a number. We just talk about you're, you now have to have a discussion with people about the mechanics, right? Because to your point, everybody knows about saving for, not everybody, but a lot of people are very hip to the idea of saving for retirement. But what they, what they don't know how to do or where they struggle is, how do I take that pile of money, that pile of assets? Some of it could be real estate. Some of it could be cash money. Some of it could, could be any number of, 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 of assets. How do I turn that into a paycheck? That's that's because that's, that's what I care about. Right? That's all people care about. And then how many of those checks am I going to get? Right? Yeah. Am I going to get a lot of them? Am I going to get a little of them? You know what's what's going to happen? Every yeah, month? Right. yeah, yeah. And 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 by the way, and with that goes your own analysis, right? Like you as an individual, we go back to this beginning part of our discussion about be real with yourself. You have to sit down and say, well, what do I need? Right? What do I need? And 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 can do those are those in are those in coordination or are those in conflict? Because then you get back to the idea of, is it time? Yeah. Right? So, you know, we talked about all the other things that you're going to be ready for. And again, we don't lead with the money, but it's certainly part of the discussion. So, so the first chapter, the, like the first sub chapter of this cash flow analysis is how much does it cost? How much, how much is it going yep. to cost me in retirement? Uh, do I still have a mortgage? Do I, or, you know, how much is it going to cost for me to live? Or if maybe I don't have a mortgage, uh, what are my taxes? What are my, you know, what, what's my, what's, you know, what's my, you know, what's my cost for my housing situation? Sure. What's my cost for my, my expenses, my, you know, all the, you know, my cable, my phone bill, my utility, all like, what, what is my, what is my, what does that side of the ledger look like? Is like what it's going to cost me per month. And I, and we always, I deal in months, right? Like monthly, monthly yeah. costs. Yeah. You know? So how much is it going to cost me per month? So therefore, this is how, if it's going to cost me $6,000 a month to, you know, based on all, you know, $6,000 after taxes, that's how much it's going to cost. I need to generate six, a minimum of $6,000 a month from my, whatever my income sources whatever that, those I've, sources are going that to I've, that I've, I've set up and, and, and manipulated and, and positioned for this, you know, for this epic moment in my life. And so when you, you know, as you're, as you're going through the checklist and you say, okay, hey, Here's my here's how much it costs for me to live, and then I'm like, okay, well now let me look at my sources and what is the potential for 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 me to be able to take this. And you may say, well, I could I could do this. I could, if it's six thousand dollars a month, I can generate six thousand dollars after taxes per month. Sure. But then you said the question, like, how long can I do that? Yeah. How long how long is that going to last? And then remember, 
that's you know the, when you go back to the other side of the ledger of how how of how much it costs is that six thousand dollars a month is that going to change of course it's going to change yes it is of course it's going to change. Yes, is it, it going to go down potentially potentially could go down because maybe you haven't say you paid off your mortgage yet so maybe your mortgage is going to go away but there's going to be other things there's going to be we talked about health care earlier and how health care costs like supplemental health care that seems to go up all the time and it's there's you know there, that's just a it's a fact of life yeah. there's going to be there's going to be your your health costs may go up there may be you know you may have health issues that may just require you to spend more money there's going to be all you know you're we're limited by our own imaginations of all the reasons of why that six thousand dollars or that whatever that cost of living is is not going to change and most likely nine out of ten times it's going to go up as you get older sure yeah now yeah. so then you go back to the other side of my income side of ledger and how how am I going to be am I going to be able to keep pace with that because the other thing is remember there's you know that that I thing that 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 rhymes with deflation it's called inflation oh yeah, yeah. I'm sure about that so so you know again if you if you're re planning on retiring for a long time and again if you're you know if you're a client of either the Marsden Law Group or Main Effort Financial your retirement goes to age 110. You guys go to 110, right? Right, around 110 ish. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so 110 is like so. That's that's one of the actually one of the benefits of if you do business with JRI is that there's a, some fine print that you will most likely live to age 110. You, yeah. you may be here now. We will I, st we'll stop billing you at 111. Oh, we're, we're, we're at 110 yeah. at, on your 110th birthday. Yep. That's what I tell my clients. I'm like, we're done. Yeah. Like we're done. Our relationship is done. I, you, oh, and by, just for for giggles, by the way. If you look at this is like we're, like John's not making this up in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> if you look at the lifetime tables that the that the government uses, yeah, they go to 115. Yeah, so they're not messing around. Like they're recognizing there's an RMD calculation for you being 110 years old, yeah. right? And Fidel I, Fidelity will tell you this is how much you have to take out at yeah. 110. John, here's your MRD, <laughs> which is most of it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's a large number. Yeah, yep. so clean that thing out. So, and our joke is that age 110, the last thing you're going to be worrying about is money, right? Yep. Be, yeah, I'm, whatever. I, I want it all. <laughs> You'd be on TV. You'd be making some money for appearances special. and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. That's right. That's right. So, so, so you know, with with luck, you're you're gonna you're gonna go to that age 110. So that means. That income has to sustain for a could be for a very very long time. Like yes. A, like a whole second life, right? If you if you retire at sixty five, that's a long time. Well, it that's is a whole second lifetime. It is. It, it's, it, it is it's right. A real it's a whole second lifetime. It's a whole second lifetime, and and how long it's going to be? You know, that's the that's the million dollar question. Well, and it, and again, it's a whole second lifetime, and it's a whole second lifetime based around withdrawals. Yeah. Right. It's a whole second lifetime based around not putting money in. Now you've already lived a lifetime accumulating it, so now. The idea that you're not going to be spending, that you're living another lifetime depleting it, well, you want it to be a whole lifetime. Yeah. You don't want it to be 10 years, right? right. You, you want it to. Yeah, because, and that's the whole thing. Like, you know, no one wants to, you know, that's, that becomes your big fear. Your, your financial fear yes. in retirement is running out of money, right? Yep. And nobody wants to run it because th then, you're, then you're really limited, right? And then you're going to be relying on other things or relying on factors that you don't have control over. And, you know, as people get older, that's the whole thing. Like, the, you know, the older you get, you know, you want to kind of maintain as much control of your life as you can because, you know, eventually as we get really old, you know, we're, we're limited as to what we can control. Like, you know, and I, I mean, at some point, if I've lived long enough, I'm probably not going to be able to drive anymore. Yeah, you, know you're not gonna be, you might not be working. You yeah. might, you know, at some point, work doesn't work out. You know, it's just not going to happen that way anymore. So, so you need to figure those things out a little bit. All right, bit. So, so, so we haven't talked about kind of the, 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 the nuts and bolts of it, but we, we just know that there's, it's going to cost, we, we have to figure out how much it's going to cost yeah. for us and have the, the ability to, to forecast that, that potentially that cost, most likely, is going to go up over time. And then there's my how much I'm going to be, what my income sources are. So, right. so the first thing we talk. So, let's talk about income sources. Let's talk. You want, let's right. talk. So, so now we're now we're finally talking about like the the money aspect of it. And um, what type of income sources do we love the most? Um, you did an L. We just talked about it two seconds ago. Lifetime like, income sources. Oh. <laughs> That's what we love. <laughs> that was a trick question. That was. That was. An income source for a year doesn't do much for you. I feel like Those I was, are called gambling winnings. <laughs> right. Yeah. Lifetime, of course, these are things that are going to last for a lifetime, not just not an income source that's going to last for a weekend. <laughs> not Jay's weekend Daytona income source. No. Of course, lifetime. Right. <laughs> yeah. Jay's. Jay, that's, that's that's Jay's folder. That's my life. That's my, yeah. that's my, that's my plan. There right we go, there. honey. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Yeah, part of our yeah yeah Kim. Part of our plan is we're going to swing by Foxwoods on the way down to Key West just to <laughs> get so some I money, can, so I get some more. Lifetime, <laughs> a little walk around change, some more lifetime. Income. That's right. That's right. 
So right. So uh, so so what are so lifetime income things like Social Security, things like pensions, right? Things like uh, if you have any form of an annuity, like an, an annuity that's guaranteed for your lifetime. Those are those are the type of things that are lifetime incomes. What are some other income sources that you know that we know about that that you may potentially have in retirement? You may have. Well, first thing you may have is you may have your, your liquidity. You may have your, sure. your money, right? Yep. Your, your, what, what we have, what we would, would have been talking about for all these years, your war chest. Yep. It's time yep. you're going to war. Not really going to war, but you're, it's, it's time to open the war you're chest. You're going to war retirement. Yeah. You're you're gonna, you want to win that battle. Yeah, that's yeah, right. you're absolutely yeah, right. You don't want to lose that, right? No, no. You might have you might have uh, you might have rental income. You might have property. Right. So so I might right at my war chest, and then and then as part of my war chest may not all be liquid. I may own real estate. And, That's right. And if I own some real estate, like rental income and or rental property, that and and if it's if I positioned it correctly and I've been able to kind of you know get this to the point where it's it's going to generate an income for me, then as long as again as long as I do the right things and as long as I have tenants and as long as I you know I'm, I'm able to maintain that part of my you know my my retirement business that could generate income sure. for me yeah. yeah right so all these things are going to add and 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 so the and that could be along with social security along with if you have a pension those are more fixed 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 income you know they maybe they may have some cost of living adjustments that go with it but you're going to know what those are yeah you know and that's and so like especially social security social security is like this is how much you, if you take it today this is how much oh, you're going to get yep, forever yep, yep forever. Oh, but there's a cost of, there's a cost of living adjustment yeah. There is. Forget about it because it's negligible. Yeah, right? it's not. It's not going to keep. It's not, it's not going to keep pace with inflation or anything That's like right. that. So, right. so you have your Social Security, and then maybe if you have a pension, your pension is going to say, "Yep, here's how. If you take it today, this is how much you're going to get forever with a cost of living adjustment again." But it's going to. It's not going to change dramatically. It's not going to change so much. Nope. So, so nope. these are your costs. If you have a rental income, right? So again, barring a, you know. Granted, rents change depending upon sure. kind of the you know what the, the way market, the way yep. the winds blowing in yep. the real estate market. But for the most part, you, you know, probably for the for the you know again. But well, your rental income can change in the sense that you could have none, right? You could have a vacancy. Well, that's right. You could have a tough time renting it for any number of reasons, right? Whether it's the market, whether it's the condition of the building. You know, people like real estate at some point in their life, but if you don't have a ton of it, if it's not the base of your operation. You know, real estate's work. That's still work. Oh, yeah. That phone rings costs, at 2 a.m. Right, it costs yeah. money. My plumbing's out. This is out that side. There's work to it. It's not just, oh, what a freebie. So right. that's work. So so if you're in, let's say you're in a situation and you're rent, you have a property and let's say you get $3,000 a month from that property, granted the $3,000 a month is going to be taxed because it's income yep. that's taxed to you. Um, there's costs involved with with you know, with, with maintaining the property, whatever the maintenance costs are, whether it be, or, you know, depend upon what, you know, how you, how the utilities yeah, you taxes, make. Taxes, insurance. You, you have yeah. your taxes, your insurance. So, you know, when your property is rented, you may, you, you it caught your gross is three, you may end up netting $1,500, yep, right? that's right. So, so, and then, so that's it. Now that's a relative, again, as long as it's rented and things kind of remain this relatively the same, although, you know, and again, when we talk about financial planning or any type of planning, you know, we, we do it in like five year increments, you know? Sure. So, so in the short, in, in your short, short range retirement, so the next five years, provided all those rental situation is the same, you're probably going to get, you know, you, you can count on that for at least the next yeah. five years. And again, how long do we say retirement is? It's to age 110. So unless you retire at age 105, you got a lot, lot more oh, yeah. five year, a lot of five year plans, a lot, a lot of, a lot of five year like rocks to jump across or lily pads to jump across to get, you know, to get on the other side of that lake. So my rental income, that's a, that's another potentially fixed cost. So then that brings me over to my liquidity, right? So my, my money, right? Yep. So, yeah. and, and that's the, that's kind of like the art of like, how much can I take from my, you know, how much, how much can I take from, how much can I afford to take? Because how much like, can I pound on that principle? Yeah. So, so if you have a, so if you have a million dollars, let's see, we use a million dollars. If you're fortunate, you've saved a million dollars. You have a million, you open up your war chest. You're a millionaire. You're like, oh, I'm a millionaire. And you go call your friends and you say, Hey, how's it going? You don't tell them you're a yep. millionaire, but you're talking to them. Pretty good. You're, you're talking to them knowing you're a millionaire. Yeah. You might've yeah. bought an ascot. You might start yep. wearing that. That might be an indication <laughs> that you figured out you're a millionaire. Actually, yep. That's not a bad idea. That's I just you know that I may you know I may write that down no, as a, and right. incorporate it incorporate it in, in, in our, our office. Yeah, you 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 come in, you're a millionaire. We hate your mascot. You do. Congratulations. <laughs> you, do. you know what? I'm going to do that, and I'm going to take a picture of it, and you're going to be like, I can't believe he did that. Great idea. <laughs> that's a great idea. All right. So uh, from here on out, Marsden Law Group, Maine Effort Financial. You retire as a millionaire. 
you're getting your own a, a certified. It should be like a money in the law. Ascot. Oh, oh, it's gonna be branded. Of course, it'll be branded. Of course, it'll be branded. Right. Ask me how. Ask me how to get one of these ascots. <laughs> Call money in the law. That's right. Uh, and so, for those of you who are watching next week on Hollis and Cable Access, <laughs> Jay, Christian, and I will be wearing one of these. Our our uh, our new prototyped. That's retirement right. ascot. That's right. That's exactly right. <laughs> that ascot. Uh, what are those kind of hats? What are the hats like? Kind of those. Um, like, what are they? Uh, the, the ones when you, you know we you know we're running out of time. So you got to move that along a little. We are running. Out. Out yeah, of we're time. running. Out right, of time. We're about out of time. All right. All right. So all right, let's wrap we'll, this up. We'll I'm, pick this up. But the idea is money, cash flow, liquidity, the mechanics. How do we turn your money into money that you can actually spend every month? We'll talk about just that like next you're week. doing right now. Yeah. All right. Actually, we talk about that all the time. I know. We'll talk about it again. All right. See everybody next week. Thanks for joining us on Money in the Law. Jay Mars and Mars and Law Group. John Drawing, Man for Financial Halls and Cable Access. Ask God. Every <laughs> you can kiss my ascot. Ask <laughs> we'll see everybody see next, next week. week. <laughs>